Oh man, I gotta be honest, not the cleanest shoes that I've ever reviewed. They smell and they're muddy. The Wild Horse has been one of those staple trail runners over the years that has always found a place in my trail shoe rotation. I remember finishing the final 50 miles of Cascade Crest 100 in a ratty pair of the first versions and they've become a familiar friend ever since. The latest version has been on the market for quite some time and can even be found on sale right now for under $90, link in the description, but the shoe still holds up to a lot of other trail offerings. This eighth version feels a little bit lighter, more nimble, and ready to take on the classically adverse trail training. A smooth, flexible upper and comfortable reduced layer of midsole let this shoe work in a lot of distances from short and fast to long and slow. Now I've been loving the Wild Horse 8, but there are certainly some interesting things to take into consideration when adding a pair to your rotation. But at sub $90, is it too good of a deal to pass up? Whew, we got a lot to talk about today. Wild Horse 8 on deck, let's dive in. What is up everybody, Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner here for another Ginger Runner review. Today we're talking about this right here, the dirty Nike Wild Horse 8. I have plenty of miles in this shoe, I can smell them, so uh, let's just dive into this thing. Two quick caveats before we do. First and foremost, consider joining the GR Crew, it's our Patreon support page where we have an amazing community of people, runners just like yourself from around the world. We have a Discord server, we have all sorts of really fun perks. We've got great merch from the long sleeve to the hats. All available now. And second, the Ginger Runner disclaimer. This shoe was provided for review by Nike. I'm under no obligation whatsoever to say anything positive or negative about this shoe. I'm not financially compensated in any way for anything that I say in this review. All opinions are my own. No one has to approve it. You're the first to see it. Give yourself a little shoulder rub. And let's dive in. We're gonna talk about the basics, the things that I like and dislike about the Wild Horse 8, starting as always, the things that I like. Nimble. You know, I use that word from time to time and I, realize that when I'm talking about it in the Wild Horse 8, it's a heavier trail shoe. You probably saw that at the beginning there. Uh, it doesn't mean that the shoe doesn't feel lighter than it actually is. Um, it just, I don't know, it feels like you're wearing a low to the ground, low slung, fun trail running shoe, which compared to previous versions of the Wild Horse says a lot that this shoe can feel nibble because the earlier version certainly did not. They're a bit clunkier, a little bit bigger. Something like the Terra Kiger would feel more nimble, whereas this was just, it's just bigger. But now, I don't know, I, it, it feels different underfoot. I like the eighth version. I might even consider it the best wild horse, but I appreciate that they're sort of taking it down from a, a bigger shoe to a more reduced shoe. The upper, I think the upper is improved. It's more flexible, it's more forgiving, uh, it's very comfortable, still a bit breathable, and also quite durable. This thing has seen a ton of action out on the trails. Mud, grit, grime, and that's uh, holding up quite well. And shape. So this is something I wanna kinda give Nike credit for. The shape of this shoe and a lot of the trail offerings aren't pigeonholing people's feet into a really narrow, precise package. The Wild Horse has sort of always been their more voluminous offering. And in this case, they've managed to reduce the shoe while maintaining that with shape and dynamicism and everything that's sort of been good about it. So I appreciate what they're doing. They've held over what's good from previous versions, uh, including the shape, so I dig it. That being said, it's not all NHL hockey preseason games and apple cider donuts. There are a couple of things that I disliked about the Wild Horse 8, let's get to those now. Lost in options. And I see this happening a lot with brands right now. Uh, you're coming out with more products that sort of fill really small niches in your product line, which sort of ends up eating your other products. So with the Wild Horse 8, how Nike had always framed their trail series was like the Kyger was sort of the race version, the Wild Horse was sort of the work horse, then the Pegasus Trail came along and sort of became the everyday running shoe. Now we've got the Zagama, we've got some other trail offerings like the Ultra Fly. So where does the Wild Horse fit? And I, I think that's sort of one of my dislikes. I find myself leaning towards the Ultra Fly or the Zagama or the Terra Kiger. Uh, so the Wild Horse just kind of gets forgotten. It feels like what the Terra Kiger used to feel like, but the Terra Kiger is kind of finding its own footing, for lack of a better term. I don't know, I just feel like it's getting lost and people might forget that this exists, especially with something like the Pegasus Trail out there. Wait, it's certainly not a lightweight shoe. Never has been. Uh, at 374 grams or 13.3, 13.4 ounces, uh, it's heavy. Um, it is a trail shoe and this particular one is just covered in dirt, which means it just, you know, kind of retains a lot of that extra weight. But uh, in my size, size 11, that is a lot of weight. There are a lot of shoes out there that weigh a lot less that get you a lot of the same perks. So un unfortunately, it's just a heavy, heavy shoe. And grip, this is something that I've talked about with a lot of Nike trail shoes. 
The outsole is not Vibram. That is reserved just for the Ultrafly. It is their own compound, though they have changed some of the compounds around over the years. Uh, it's still not very grippy. The lug depth is great on this version, which is good. But when you're dealing with super wet rocks and wet roots, which we have been here in the Pacific Northwest, it just kind of sucks because I can't always trust the outsole. I like the size of the chevrons. It's the actual material itself that I consider uh, suffering depending on the weather conditions. But that's it for dislikes. So let's get a bit more specific in our breakdown. We talk about the build quality, comfort, fit, price, and look, starting as always with the build quality. So one thing that I will give this shoe credit for is that it's built like the previous versions in that it's built like a tank. Uh, it is a very well-built shoe. I think the materials they're using here are gonna hold together really well. The seams, the welding, the way things come together, super strong. Uh, I certainly see you getting plenty of miles. Out of this comfort, the midsole, Nike React, and a whole mix here, it, it's comfortable. It's more comfortable than like early versions that had the midsole, but it felt kind of dead. This one, you have a bit more life. It's not a super thick stack, and that big, thick outsole rubber also sort of takes away some of the joy of the midsole, but honestly, it's a comfortable shoe. Fit, you do get a good lockdown. This lacing system is obviously what Nike's been using across their trail line. It's cumbersome, it's a bit overdone, but I do get a good midfoot fit in this shoe and my foot's not sliding around either. So that's always a good thing. Price, it's on sale for less than $90. It's $89 right now. That can't be beat. For a trail shoe that can get the job done, take you the distance, whatever that distance might be, uh, that's a pretty damn good price. A lot of trail shoes are now double that. There's some out there that are four times that, uh, certainly not worth that price, uh, but at $90 or 89 bucks, link in the description, I think that is a solid deal. And finally, looks, I always give Nike credit because they deserve it. Their shoes look great, and I think their design department clearly has a lot of expertise in making their shoes look great. Uh, this is no exception. I think this is a cool colorway. They have some other colorways that are also equally as awesome. Check out the Zagama as well, the other Nike offerings. They just do a good job. So overall, the shoe is great looking. In conclusion, this shoe is at $89, an amazing deal. I'd almost say that this shoe sort of found itself, found its reason to exist in the eighth version. And then that gets lost in the entire lineup of Nike trail shoes because there's just so many different shoes to choose from. Yes, there are better trail offerings from other brands out there. Yes, there's gonna be shoes that might last you longer or be more comfortable underfoot or just have better grip entirely. But at $89, you're just getting a package that's kind of worth the extra scratch. It's cool to see how much this shoe has grown up since its origin, and I'd be happy to throw this into rotation, especially at that price point, and I think you will too. So that brings me to my final criteria, is the Wild Horse 80 buy, try, or a why? 89 bucks, that's a buy. Um, check it out, link in the description, all that good stuff. If you want more information about the shoe or you wanna get a pair for yourself or you have other running gear that you need to get, whether it's nutrition, apparel, more shoes, socks, whatever, there are links in the description that'll take you over to Running Warehouse. Please consider using them. So rather than lining the pockets of the Bezoses of the world, it throws a couple extra dollars our way and it does help us out. So consider that if you haven't already. That's it, my friends. If you've worn the Wild Horse 8 or have any interest in it, let us know in the comments what you think. I'm super curious. Let's get that conversation going. Otherwise, get out there. Train hard, race harder, and part of the hardest. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.